Oh yes, I, I think we, uh, we, we need to get back to the core intent of the founders, and I think that we need to let the Democrats know that we're going to speak up against the way that they've been handling the Constitution and driving through legislation. Thank you. Rob Russo. The Commerce Clause is Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. It says that the federal government shall have the ability to regulate commerce in between states, something the states can't do on their own right. The federal government's been abusing this since the turn of the last century. It started with Schechter poultry. The Supreme Court couldn't handle the fact that there was a chicken farm in Long Island that was employing 10 year olds, so they allowed the Commerce Clause to be a way to stop that. I think we all agree with that. However, it's gotten blown further and further out of proportion, and now Congress uses it as a justification to do whatever it wants to do. I believe, with, I believe in the Supreme Court's ruling in the 1990s, of U.S. v. Lopez, where the court said it has to have some connection to interstate commerce. Because the Constitution very clear, clearly lays out we have a supreme federal government with limited powers. And we have inferior state governments, but with protected rights. But for too long, our states have been shedding their responsibilities onto the federal government. And it has to stop. We need a federal government that focuses on the stuff it's supposed to be doing and doing that right. Not trying to figure out how we can take more of the responsibility away from the state. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of listening to state politicians blame our problems in Connecticut on Washington. We don't need Washington. We only get 69 cents back on the dollar from what we send to Washington in the first place. I'm really sick and tired of listening to local mayors say, oh, everything would be great in town if it wasn't for the president. I'm a Bridgeport. I've got to tell you, a lot of life at Bridgeport has to do with the very people that run Bridgeport. And I'm sick and tired of hearing them not take responsibility for the city and blame it on other politicians. We need to slow Congress down as it applies to the Commerce Clause. It has a purpose. But the ruling in U.S. v. Lopez is spot on. They need to stick to interstate commerce, not trying to take responsibility away from the states. Thank you. Get back in the cycle. Next one will be Rob Merkel. Thank you. Uh, like Rob said, the, let's look at the intent of the Commerce Clause when it was written. Now, look back, 1700s, you had a loose affiliation of states that were conducting commerce in between their borders, and they were also trying to unify to conduct commerce internationally. Now, what the Commerce Clause was effectively intended to do was to keep states from gouging each other or, for, or from uh, levying unfair penalties because something's from Georgia versus Virginia. That's all it is. It's a level playing field. Keep in mind the federal government is supposed to be small enough or just big enough depending on your perspective, to keep us from killing each other. <laughs> really. Protect our borders, provide for national defense, and strong common currency. Other than that, get out of the way. Now, what's been happening lately, particularly with this administration, is we see a couple things. We see the Internet. They want it under the hubris of equal access. They want to now control who gets Internet access, what can be transferred, how it can be transferred, they want their finger in that pie as well, because that's a revolutionary thing. If you guys haven't been paying attention, that it's a game changer, and they know it, so they have to control it. The other side of that coin is, you look at um, the Fairness Doctrine, another, whatever you want to call it, come up under the Fairness Doctrine, under the Commerce Clause. Well, because these airwaves can go across state lines, we have to make sure it's fair to everyone. So let's use it to cut down free speech. Needless to say, Air America, anyone here ever listen to Air America, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> they filed bankruptcy last week. You know what they said? They said, oddly enough, we are not immune to the laws of capitalism, which is give the people what they want, provide it in a, in a manner that is uh, efficient and satisfying to the customer, and you will succeed. The government's not doing that, and it's certainly not doing the commerce clause. I think we need to scale it back so that the criteria is does this affect fairness of competition between states? And in all cases, it needs to be um, 
subjugated to the other rights inherent in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, uh, Second Amendment in particular. Thank you. Next will be Rick Torres. The most significant um, 16 words in the Constitution are the 16 words in the Commerce Clause. They're the most significant because they've been used to justify the massive government growth that's taken place in this country from FDR through um, Johnson, through Clinton, through even Bush at times, and uh, um, of course right now with Barack Obama. The Commerce Clause was a decent ar ar um, article, not an article, a decent sentence. It was intended to protect the states from each other, from violating each other, but it was a little bit too vague. It's one of the few flaws in the Constitution. That, that vagueness has allowed the construction uh, of 70% of the massive government that's been created in this country. I read a piece by Robert Bork recently about this. He called it the singular most significant piece of language in the Constitution that's led to uh, the destruction of the rest of the Constitution. His suggestion was is that you can't turn it back. You have to go at it slowly. Begin by not allowing any more use of that 16, those 16 words to justify just about anything that government wants to do. Make sure that it has to do specifically with commerce between states, between nations, and at the time between, between tribes. And then begin the process of slowly dismantling all of the programs that have been created using the just, this, these 16 words as justification. Among them, for instance, is the, the, uh, all of the departments, including uh, the um, education department. We have now had an education department at the federal level that was intended to help people across the country. That, on top of all the education departments in the states already that are taking our money and wasting it, that on top of departments of education that most cities have. So what the government, the federal government does is just to layer on top of layer on top of layer, and of course all of us here end up paying for these layers, all in support of government and less in support of the free market and the decency that this country was founded on. So that, those 16 words are very relevant and we should do our best to push them back. Thank you. Dan Ebisella. Well, I, I think you'll find that we're all in agreement on this, and I think whether it's healthcare or internet commerce or, or any of the issues we talked about, these are issues that are better left to the states. Uh, but I actually think we Republicans need to be willing to admit when we've screwed up as well. Uh, and we did a big doozy on the Commerce Clause in 2002 uh, with the No Child Left Behind Act, uh, which is something that any of you who have kids in school know that this well-intentioned bill, which was well beyond the constitutional scope of the federal government, has actually had a massive negative impact on our schools. Uh, you know, it was the federal government said, oh, look, we just want to put in accountability standards for our students. Sounds reasonable enough. But when the federal government does something, they do it with a sledgehammer. They don't do it with the scalpel that states or even better localities can do. And so this abuse of the Commerce Clause has led to our kids being tested every single year. That teachers are now teaching to the test rather than the critical thinking skill that we need our students to learn to compete in the 21st century. So I think everybody up here is going to agree that we need to stop the abuse of the Commerce Clause. But we actually, as Republicans, need to own up to the fact that we've abused it too. And we need to roll these things back, starting with defeating the health care bill, starting from scratch, scrapping no child left behind, and leaving education where it should be, with the states, and even more preferably, with your local boards of education. <laughs>